Hi friends, if you want to learn how to make your own dog harness, stay tuned. Okay, these are the two fabrics I'm going to use today. They're left over from a project I did a few months ago. They weren't dog related projects. I had made myself a laptop cover and I think that these fabrics are adorable. So I want to try to make Posey a new harness today. In order to make the harness, we are going to use the pattern that we made in a previous video for the dresses. However, we are not going to make a skirt to go with it. We are only gonna use the top portion and make a bodice, which will become a harness. So this is kind of nice during the winter months too, because it covers a little bit more of your dog's torso than say a collar or a harness that only has straps. So let's get started. To get started, I want to decide which fabric I want to be the top of the harness. And I really like this floral print, so I'm gonna go with this, and this will be in the underside. Of course, you could always use just a plain cream or white colored or black, anything on the back. Sometimes it's nice to buy some inexpensive fabric that you can use over and over again to use as the back side of your bodice for your dresses or a harness. But these are scraps that I have and they've just been sitting around, so I'm gonna put them to use. This will be the back, and this will be the front. So that being said, this back piece of fabric is kind of a funny shape and I'll show you. As you can see here, there's no fabric here. <laughs> so I can make this work by putting this bodice down on this long piece because if I put it here, it wouldn't fit. Here, it wouldn't fit. So I think if I piece it right in here, it'll work and if I put it just right I can actually use some of this bodice fabric to maybe make some embellishments on the top side of the harness and I think that's really cute so I'm just going to take my pins and pin this in place once this is pinned in place go ahead and cut it out or if you would prefer you can use chalk and trace it and then cut it but I think this is simple. I've pinned it in place. I'm gonna cut it out. Okay, this one is completely cut out and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my other fabric and cut out one more just like this. All right, we have both pieces of our bodice cut out. So now what we would typically do is put these good sides together and sew all the way around except for the bottom portion. But today we're going to stop here and move away our back piece and decide what we want to do on the top of the bodice. This will be on the back of your dog facing upwards and we need to attach a little D-ring in order to clip a leash to. But it's also fun to decorate with some kind of ruffle or a bow so we need to decide what we want to do with that. Because I have some leftover hound's tooth fabric, I think it would be really cute to incorporate it on the top of this bodice, maybe in this center area. And we could use it in order to attach our D-ring. This is what I'm referring to when I say D-ring. A D-ring is just that. It's in the shape of a D. I bought these at a Japanese store for about, I wanna say a dollar to two dollars for all of these there's 14 in a pack and i bought them in silver as well as this kind of antique gold color so if you can't find them or you don't have one of these stores near you you can purchase them at a local craft store joanne's fabric even walmart would sell them but i have found that they're much more expensive you might get like a two or three pack for about four dollars which is still worth buying but if you can find them and a quantity like this for the price I paid, that's really worth it. So what I want to do is take this black fabric here and looking at the width of my D-ring, I need to determine how wide I want my strip going up the bodice to be, to be able to fit in here. Of course, I could scrunch it up a little bit, but I still wanna have a little bit of an idea. And I believe this is about an inch wide. I can measure it here against my board. Yes, this is one inch from here to here. So basically I want my strip to end up being about an inch 
wide. In order not to have any rough edges, I will take my fabric. I need to overestimate. I don't only want it to be an inch because I'm going to sew it. So I'm gonna do about an inch and a half. Fold it in half. I'm gonna cut the excess fabric off and I'm gonna sew all the way down the length of this. But I also need to determine how long I want this strip because I also want to gather it up a bit. So when I look at my bodice right here, my bodice at this point without being sewn with the, we will have, we have a little extra here for seam allowance, but it's about five inches and it will end up being less than that by the time I sew it all together. But I'm gonna go ahead and make my houndstooth strip about six inches in order to leave some room for gathering. In fact, I might even up it to seven inches to be on the safe, safe side because I can always cut away what I don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and measure up seven inches and cut that off. I'm going to fold my fabric over so that it's about an inch and a half, which is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and pin mine in place right now. Both ends, maybe one in the middle. And I'm just gonna cut off this excess. Now I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine and with about a quarter inch to a half inch seam allowance, so all the way up, be remembering to backstitch at the beginning and the end. So I'll go do that and we'll be right back. Okay, I have sewn all the way up the length of this strip. I'm going to remove my pins and then I will take a safety pin, a large safety pin, and attach it to one side of the fabric, not going through both pieces, just one. And this will help me to flip this inside out. I just kind of work the safety pin up through here and grab it and pull my fabric down around it till I have brought it completely through to the other side. Then I can remove my safety pin. Now I have a tube of fabric and I'm going to line up my seam in the very back. I don't really want to leave it on the side because it doesn't leave a nice smooth finish. But if you do, it's not the end of the world. For me, I'm going to have it centered in the back here and I'm going to press it with my fingers or you could press it with an iron to try to give yourself a nice flat surface to work on. Next, I'm going to gather this up. In order to gather this piece of fabric, I am going to start on one end without back stitching. I'm going to leave extra string when I start and I'm going to run it up my sewing machine with the largest stitch size I have and then pull it off the machine, leaving a piece of string at the end as well. Do not back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, as you can see, I left extra thread at the beginning and the end. I have stitched all the way down the center. You can see I have white bobbins, you can see it a little bit better there. They're very large stitches. So what I'm going to do is take the top thread, which for me is the black thread, and pull it to the top and push the white to the back on both sides. Top thread to the front, back thread to the back. Then I'm gonna take one end of that. I'm gonna use the top thread, I'm gonna hold it and pull, and at the same time, I'm going to cinch my fabric up. I'm going to pull on the black thread and cinch my fabric up. Careful not to break your thread. Pull a little bit and then scrunch your fabric down towards the center. We're going to do this until we get to the desired length, which for me, is going to be from this end to this end. So a little bit further here, but as you can see, 
as I go along here, it's making a cute little ruffle. Okay, I'm about there. I need a little bit more on this end here. Once I reach my desired length, I'm going to find the very center. For me, it's already creased on the center, so I know. And I'm going to pin this in place right down the center, just like so. Just work your ruffles as you go to the spot you like. But before we pin it off, we're gonna take our D-ring. Here I have my D-ring and I'm going to slip it over the fabric and bring it right to the center. Perfect. This is going to be where our leash, leash attaches. So I will go ahead and continue to pin this on. Now that I have it all pinned into place, I'm going to bring it to my sewing machine and stitch all the way up the center. When I get to the D-ring, I will push it out of the way and then push it back the other way and continue up, just adjusting my ruffles as I go. Don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, my D-ring is completely attached. It's very secure. If you're worried about how secure it is, you can go over this a couple of times to reinforce the stitch, or you could have even sewn up both sides of this. But I'm confident that this is enough for my small weight dog. Posey only weighs about seven to eight pounds, so I trust this D-ring and the stitching that was put on here. Okay, so now we can decide if we want any other embellishments like a bow or we could leave it at this. So we'll move on from here. Okay, I decided to go through my stash of ribbons and bows and things and I came across this little pink bow that I made several years ago. I never added a final embellishment, but this could work. However, I don't think that these pinks match very well. I also have this sweet little flower that I bought at Walmart for a couple of bucks. That could work because there are some soft pinks in here. But I found this adorable yellow bow, which is just so bright and fun. And if you look closely, there are some little yellow accents on the harness. And I'm kind of loving that. I think it would be really cute. But I haven't decided yet. This is something that I will add in the very end, so we don't have to worry about it now. But I'm leaning towards this one. For now, we will set our bows aside and we will take our second portion of the bodice and we're gonna attach this at this point. Because we've already added this, we can get the rough ends of both of these tucked into the fabric when we put it together. So now I'm going to leave this portion of the bodice with the good side of the fabric facing up and I'm gonna take the other part portion of the bodice and flip it upside down. So this way, the good sides of the fabric are facing each other and the bad sides are facing outward. And I am gonna pin this into place all the way around. Now that I have it all secured into place, I'm going to bring it to my sewing machine. I'm going to start on one end and stitch all the way around the outside of this bodice, but I'm going to leave one end open. This way I can pull it all to the right side when I'm done. So remember to leave one portion about two to three inches open. The wider you leave the opening, the easier it will be to pull the fabric out. But I think the end of the strap will be easy to see close up in the end and hide. So I'm going to leave this area open, but the rest I'm going to stitch closed, remembering to back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, I have gone ahead and stitched all the way around this bodice, except for this end, which I have left open. This will be where we pull the fabric to the right side. But before we finish and pull it through, I'm going to cut the corners off of the bodice so that it will be less bulky in the end. Be careful not to cut into your stitch. Next, I'm going to put notches in all the curves here and here. Simply take your fabric, fold it in half, and this little corner we're gonna cut off without cutting into our stitch line. Just like so, and then a little bit over, fold it again, 
cut that corner off. Do this a couple of times around the curve. And the same with the arm curves. Okay, now we have these all notched out. We're gonna go ahead and pull the fabric through to the right side. My opening is pretty small, so it might take a little bit of work, but it's doable. You could always put your opening down here at the bottom and you'd have a little more room to pull the fabric right side out, but I'm fine with this. I'll just work away at it. Well, this way was definitely more work. I would recommend leaving an opening at the bottom, but I'm making it work. It's possible, it's just definitely more work. Cute, a few smacks helps. <laughs> Okay, now that this is all turned right side out, I will say that I don't recommend pulling it through the side strap unless your pattern is a much wider one than mine. This made for a lot of work and I don't feel like I can get my scissors through here or something pokey to point out, to poke out the corners. Whereas if I had left it at the bottom, it would have been a little easier. That being said, I wouldn't put the opening right in the center because we want to catch this little embellishment that we put on earlier in the seam. So maybe right over here to the side, but it worked. I was able to pull it all through the arm. So the next step is to take this to your iron. When you bring it to your iron, tuck the ends of the opening that you made under that way you can iron them and they'll stay in place. That way when we stitch it, it will be easy, whether it's down here or on your arm. Okay. Now that this is all pressed nice and flat, we'll take it to our sewing machine and sew this end here that we left open, or if it was down at the bottom, closed. A good way to do this and make it look totally complete and like it was done on purpose to have top stitching is to stitch around the whole bodice, about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And this way it'll close up our opening and give the bodice a more finished look. So I'm gonna bring it to my sewing machine and I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and stitched all the way around the bodice and it gives it a nice finished look. So our next step is to attach our Velcro closures. You don't have to use Velcro. You can use snaps or you could use some kind of a um, buckle, but I'm content with Velcro. I have some pretty heavy duty, strong Velcro and Posey has other harnesses that use Velcro and they stay on her perfectly fine. But if you have a dog that tends to pull a lot when you walk them, you may want to try to use something a little bit stronger or test it out first. This is the Velcro that I use here, and I just buy it by the yard. I think I actually get two yards at a time. And so I determine how wide, I'll pull it out here. I determine how wide my Velcro needs to be. And for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it about here so it fits in between here. So these will be for this. I keep those together and for the side straps, I'm gonna cut it right about there. And these will be for the side straps. So for the top straps, I'm going to take one piece of my Velcro and pin it to the top of this strap, pin it into place. And for the opposite strap, I'm gonna put it on the bottom portion and pin it into place. That way, when these are wrapped around the dog, the Velcros will meet up. And we will do the same for the side straps. So the same piece of scratchy Velcro, I will put on the top portion. And I like to put the scratchy piece of the Velcro on the top of the bodice. This way it doesn't rub on the dog when it's closed if it ends up hanging out a little bit. And that there, and that means that the soft side of the Velcro will go on the bottom half of the harness, pin it in. And just to make sure before I sew it, when I bring them around, they will meet up. So now I'll take it to my sewing machine and stitch around the whole perimeter of the Velcro on all four of these pieces. Okay. 
All right, I have all my Velcro attached and they all line up properly. So I'm happy with that. You could call it quits at this point, but I'm gonna add my bow. Okay, so I want the bow to sit right above this D-ring. So I'm going to hand stitch it on right there. I'm gonna double my thread over and tie a knot at the very end. And then I'm simply gonna come up from the back side of the fabric right about here, right through the middle and pull that up. Then I'm going to take the back side of my bow and come through a couple layers of the ribbon. Pull that nice and tight on to the harness. And then come back through the fabric to the back side. Make sure that's in the place I want it. Looks good. So I'm going to come back up through the back side of the fabric again. I like to come through the back side of the fabric only and then catch my bow. It seems to be a little easier to push through the layers of fabric. Once I've caught my bow through the back side, pull it through and then go down through the fabric to the bottom side of the harness again. And pull that through. And I do this a couple of times, but because my thread is doubled up. I don't have to do it as many times as if it were single. And I feel like that's nice and secure, so I'm gonna give it a good tight tug without breaking the thread, and I'm gonna make a knot in the back. And then we will snip away the extra thread. And there you have it a very adorable, simple harness, and you can make it to your liking. If you're making your harness for a boy dog, you simply buy materials that suit you and your dog. You don't have to put a bow. You could, if you wanted to put a bow, you could put one in the style of a bow tie. And I just think the possibilities are endless and it's so much fun to customize them for your dog. And as you can see here, here's my D ring to attach my leash to. So let's try this on Miss Posey. Here we have little Miss Posey, and I'm going to take my harness and wrap it around her. That fits great. I can't wait to attach a leash to this and take her for a walk. I think I'll try now. Well, it's definitely too dark outside, so I'm gonna put the leash on here. As you can see, here's her little D. Let me move that aside. There's the little D ring right there. And I'm just gonna take this, latch it on, Good Posey, come on. And as you can see, it works really well.